Have you written out what happiness means to you? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep, I have. I have. For okay. sure. I have. For yeah. sure. Have you guys written out, like, wrote it down, it's on paper, you can refer back to it. Somebody says, what does happiness mean to you? And you know what it is? Because people usually say the ability to pay my bills, I want to love my family, and all that stuff. And that's but responsibility. That's responsibility. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you want to love your family, but people forget to say things like, I want to be loved. Mm. I want to be respected. I want to have ownership and freedom of my time. I want to be healthy. Like, we forget the things that y'all better write it down. Okay, assignment. Everybody who's watching, write it out today. What does it mean for you to actually be happy? Yeah. It, it's not, I want to be in a relationship. Well, anybody can be in a relationship. Is it a good one? What does that relationship look like? It's clue. Happiness has nothing to do with material things. And I think uh, it's important to make a list of the things that make you happy. Yeah. Like, obviously, defining what happiness is. Mm -hmm. But what, what, I, what I did was... I just made a list of the things that make me happy and the things that make me not happy. Mm -hmm. Because we don't, we don't really think about it like that. Like, I, I'm just unhappy. But sometimes you got to, like, extract all the things that contributed to this actual feeling. Mm -hmm. And some people don't necessarily need to be entrepreneurs right now because it's not making you happy. Mm. Welcome to another edition. Welcome of the to Social another edition of the Social Proof Podcast. Welcome to another edition of the Social Proof My Podcast. My name is Donnie Wiggins, and this is Dave. You all want to do. You all want to do. I do like your outfit today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Of, the, the, I don't. Well, it's different materials, and I don't know. The materials don't go together. It looks good. Is that King Energy? That is not King Energy. That's not. That is it King is Energy. King Energy. That's King Energy. Woo -woo. <laughs> uh, she's now queen energy. That's what, uh, yeah, that's what we created. So, um, yes, um, the, the social group podcast, we are here, uh, doing our very, very best to give you all the information to uh, help you with your journey in entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And today we're going to talk about the transition from your job to your dream. But before yeah. we get there, how was your week? My week. My week was good. It was consistent. I didn't have too many ups. I didn't have too many downs. It was mm -hmm. a consistent week. Yeah. Lots of me ups. Okay. Mm -hmm. That was a good week. Mm -hmm. I had a really great business week. Um, really, really good stuff in business. So, what did you do to have that great business week? Or yeah. was it just, you know, like sometimes you're on the path and you're doing the same thing, but some week it's just amazing. Yeah. So it was consistent in activity mm -hmm. in terms of what me and my team do on a regular basis. But sales went crazy really? last week. Like numbers went crazy um, last week, probably a 4X of what we do on a weekly basis. Dang. Would you, what would you so, attribute to? Um, let me see. Did we have any new? I don't know. I don't know. We had a whole lot more calls on the calendar. Um, I think I recently had an episode, a podcast episode that dropped mm -hmm. that drove some traffic. Gotcha. And just uh, also me, you know, in my, I'm in my state, you know, my 90 day self-development challenge where I'm being really intentional and in affirming what I want to happen. Mm -hmm. And an abundance of leads are one mm -hmm. of those things that are, uh, that, I, that I am affirming and it happens. So, you know, nothing out of the ordinary happened. It was just a majorly, insanely great, week financially. Good. I, th I think a lot of entrepreneurs miss that too because you could be, you'll be doing the right activity and then you have an amazing week mm -hmm. and then you have a not so amazing week and you try to change up the activity because you had a not so amazing week. You, yeah. you think you did something wrong when really it was just the week. It just... It's just what happened. Yeah, and that what happens, happens too. Like I've had some weeks where it's like, whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Are the phones working? Yeah. <laughs> everybody good? <laughs> uh, but this was, you know, but you have that. So it balances itself out. You'll have some really, really low weeks and then you'll have some really, really high weeks and then it all balances out. Good, good. You want to know about my week? Or? I do want to know about your week. It was good. Okay. Really, what was really good, good about it? Uh, one, every week is good that I get a chance to be around my family and my friends and be able to build a, a, a business. So every week is really, really good. But 
Um, this week was good because the progress that we're making on this studio is just phenomenal. Yeah. So like, it's really real studio quality stuff. The lighting system, we got like grids all in the ce ceiling with really, really uh, good lighting. And it's just, it's going to be amazing. I have a vision and I mapped out another few million dollars with this mm. business model. So I'm really excited. And um, yeah, it's going down. You know what I forgot to mention about last week? What's up? Something, and I wanted to talk about this today on the podcast too. Last week, I remembered to play. Play what? Play. Just play. Tap into my inner child. Hmm. I think that as adults, and especially as entrepreneurs or even sometimes parents who amass this tremendous amount of responsibility, we forget to have that childlike imagination and we're always so serious mm. and it has to be so personal development. And if it's not this activity, then I'm slacking. Like there's so many uh, messages that are spread right now that says, if you watch TV, you're a loser. If you hang out and go to a club, you'll never be successful. And none of those things are true. Mm -hmm. I went to a club last week. Not you really was a club. club. I didn't go to a club. I went to Pasha. I went to Pasha, Pasha, the restaurant. Yeah. But after like, 10 o'clock. It's like a vibe. Really? So I did that. But that was like in my, that's not even what I was talking about. Like I went outside in a park and I just like ran through the park. I jumped around. I kicked my feet up and, you know, mm. did some amazing things. And it wasn't You're even something. No, I was with a girlfriend of mine. It wasn't even anything that I was like aware of in the moment, but I had such a good day. And then I heard a message later about not forgetting to play. And Real quick, did you hug a tree while you was out there? I did not. There were, I did not hug a tree. Mm. I did not get an opportunity to hug a tree, but yeah. I still will. Um, I heard a message talking about um, play and purpose and passion. I think it's very important that every single adult taps into your inner child and think about it. If you're struggling to figure out what your purpose is, if you're struggling to think about the things that you like to do in your life, go back to that inner child. So like, if you were a dancer as a little girl or a little boy, mm -hmm. dance today. If you were a painter and you haven't painted in 20 years, go and get you some paint, some canvases and paint today. What game? I was listening to uh, Jay Shetty. He has an amazing podcast. Mm -hmm. And he was saying that with his business partner, uh, back in the day, he used to play some kind of like game, like mm -hmm. Nintendo, PlayStation or something. I'm not familiar. But with his business partner... Um, that's what they do when they have their meetings because it's just mindless activity that they're like, yeah, and then we're going to make a million doing this. And then, yeah, we're going to mm -hmm. do that. I got you. I got you. That's what they do. And he says it's so fun and it brings, like, he's looking forward to these meetings. And have, And I thought about you. Like, you love playing games like Monopoly. And I'm, I'm imagining that these are things that you used to do as a child. But think about how it makes you feel in that moment to just play. Mm. I like that. Yeah. I like that. You're right. As an adult, you just forget. You forget to have fun because everything is about getting to the goal and the dream. And yep. you got an adult and all that kind of stuff. And you forget to be happy. Yeah. Ew, that's yeah. it right there. You for we're Guys, we are forgetting to be happy. And I think that we are forgetting to be happy in the most crucial ways. There is... I, I had a goal last year. We both did of hitting seven figures. And... I thought seven figures would make me feel different. I felt more resourceful. I don't feel different. You know what I mean? Like it didn't change my happiness factor. Yeah. Obviously, having seven figures for me is a whole lot better than being negative seven figures, right? Or, ha or having just seven. <laughs> no commas. Been there. That's, that's obviously because I've or been Or seven there. figures like digit, 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 yes. digit. <laughs> Dot. Dot. <laughs> Six, nine, right, 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 right. <laughs> so I've been there. I've been on that side. But in all of this pursuit of wealth and success, like we are genuinely forgetting to like just live your life and be happy. When you are on your deathbed, what are we thinking about? Like those millions can't come with us, but our spirit and our soul stays connected. And how do we want to send ourselves out? We only get one opportunity in this body on this planet. We got to turn it up. Be happy, y'all. Be happy. And that's just, I think in my self-development journey that I'm going through, it's just something that I had to remind myself of. Like, gotcha. Donnie, are you living and working to make money? 
or are you living and working to be free and happy? And it's the free and happy for me. That's real. I mean, y'all could have been a little bit more. Side note, do, do we get another you, you body? You feel it at all? Ooh, yeah. Do we get another body? Did we get... Do we, get, do we a, get another body? Okay, so that's a king energy conversation. Do we get another body? So I, I don't want. I don't, I don't want to go there. Let's not. No, yeah, no, 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 no because let's, you got answers. Let's talk about it one day, but not now because we got some directions to go in. Yes. But I was listening to something that said we are not our body. Like you never say I am hand. Right. I have a hand. You never say I am mine. Like oh, one of the strongest messages that I heard, I believe Bob, Bob Proctor said, I was listening to him yesterday. Y'all can tell I'm hype. I've been deep in development. <laughs> Bob Proctor said... What did you happy? Yes! Bob Proctor <laughs> said that the only... The only purpose for your mind is for thought. It's for thought. And for you to think about the things that make you passionate and happy and pur purposeful... That is the reason for your mind. And sometimes we allow our minds to just get so clouded and overwhelmed and stressing us out because we're misusing it. You're just supposed to think. That's all. You, your mind is supposed to store information, perceive, and receive and perceive information and help you to create a thought. And then those thoughts help you to create your life. Y'all better get into somebody personal development. Let's I'm clap it up for Donnie Wiggins right now. She's cooking yes. with grease this morning. Yes. Johnny is cooking with grease this morning. Yes. So, happy. Self-love. Mm -hmm. Yes. Y'all mm -hmm. gonna, gonna do some stuff to get happy today? Okay. Good. Like, what does that... Do you even know what that means? Joe, like, can we get her a chair? Do, do you even know what it means? Like, have you mapped out? Have you written out what happiness means to you? Absolutely. Yeah, yep, I have. I have. For okay, sure. I have. For yeah, sure. have you guys written out like wrote it down? It's on paper. You can refer back to it. Somebody says, "What does happiness mean to you?" And you know what it is because people usually say the ability to pay my bills. I want to love my family and all that stuff. And that's but responsibility. That's responsibility. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you want to love your family, but people forget to say things like, "I want to be loved." Mm. I want to be respected. I want to have ownership and freedom of my time. I want to be healthy. Like we forget the things that y'all better write it down. Okay, assignment, everybody who's watching, write it out today. What does it mean for you to actually be happy? Yeah. It's not, I want to be in a relationship. Well, anybody can be in a relationship. Is it a good one? What does that relationship look like? It's clue. Happiness has nothing to do with material things. Perks and benefits, not happiness. People with Rolls Royces and Bentleys have killed themselves. <laughs> I'll just let you work. I'll just, I'll just let you work. <laughs> Dottie talking good this morning. Talking good. Yes, happiness. And I think uh, it's important to make a list of the things that make you happy. Yeah. Like, obviously, defining what happiness is. Mm -hmm. But what, what, I, what I did was I just made a list of the things that make me happy and the things that make me not happy. Mm -hmm. Because we don't, we don't really think about it like that. Like, I, I'm just unhappy. But sometimes you got to, like, extract all the things that contributed to this actual feeling. Mm -hmm. And some people don't necessarily need to be entrepreneurs right now because it's not making you happy. Mm. You're doing something. Yo, I don't like this look right here. This one, it's not as light as the other one. I'm sorry. Um, I, and I'm sorry to distract the conversation. But... It's important to know what makes you happy. Mm -hmm. I, I like when I get dressed. Mm -hmm. I like when I go out. I like when I travel, right? But some of the things that might not make you happy is my, um, when, I, when I go see my family. Mm -hmm. No, change that one. That one's good. Change that one. Yeah. Brighten that one up. But this one's hitting light and stuff like that. So anyway. Um, the... The like any every time you go to family dinner, it makes you not happy. Mm. Now, am I saying don't go hang out with your family? Absolutely. <laughs> Doesn't make you happy. Because those are just people. Those are like human beings that are contributing. I know they're your family and there's some things you're supposed to do. But if you're engaging in activities that you know don't make you happy, mm -hmm. don't do it. But mm -hmm. because we don't make a list of the things that don't make us happy, 
We just sometimes y'all watch movies, the good movies, but you you watch a drama movie, right? And it starts to, or a love story, and it puts you in a place of feeling insignificant. Like mm. I would love to have that. I like the movie. It feels good. But at the end of every time you watch the movie, you start to reflect on your own unhappiness. Yeah. Stop watching those. Yeah. You so, will learn a lot about yourself watching movies. 100%. Pay attention to what triggers you in movies, 100%. right? You'll learn how fearful you are. You'll learn how romantic you are. You'll learn how irresponsible you are. You'll even discover what some of your dreams are through movies. So that's a good place to like really learn yourself too. The facts. Yeah. It's a good place to learn Dang, yourself. I wish we didn't decide a topic already because we could stay right here. We can stay right here. We could, but we already <laughs> told them what the show is going to be like, about. We can stay right here. <laughs> but there had, are some people that are watching like, okay, what are you going to start talking about how to leave your job? Oh, we, did we mention it? <laughs> we did. We mentioned we did. it? I said it. I don't think we said I it. I did say it. Oh, Absolutely. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Yeah. But this might be something that makes you happy. Or... The transition from your job to your dream might make you not happy. Let's mm-hmm. talk. Let's okay. When you left your job, were you happy about it? So, if I'm being honest, I had a few job transitions. I left my job a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> some voluntary and some involuntary. Right. right? Um, I have never been sad about leaving a job, whether okay. fired or resigned. I, I never resigned from a job. I just quit. Um, That's the same thing, no? Well, when you think of a resignation, you think of like a, a two-week notice oh, and I all that gotcha. stuff. Yeah, I gave minutes. Um, <laughs> or I just didn't show up. Like, either way, you know, right. I'm not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, what was the question? Did I feel bad? No, how did you feel? Oh, how did I feel? Job? If you could describe the feeling. So, there, was, there were periods that I would leave a job. So, when I left my job in 2000, eight, nine-ish, when the recession happened, I was terrified. I was terrified because I had not yet understood what my purpose was. I was struggling to figure out where I fit in. So I thought that my value was attached to finding a good job. Everybody's going to be proud of you when you've got this good job, right? But when I left my job in 2014, I felt free. I felt super free because while on my job from that res- from that experience of loss for me from previous years when i finally got my my bearings back together and got another job i also started building businesses in 2012 so i was learning how to build business i was learning how to make money off of my own ideas so when i left my job in 2014 i realized it was costing me my happiness and i i felt free mm, i w- i knew I would never go back to a job. Yeah. 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 I think I was, uh, when I left the Cheesecake Factory, I was really excited because, and maybe we'll talk about this, I just hit my goal and I knew that financially I'd be okay because I was building my business for two and a half years super consistently Mm -hmm. for two and a half years. It wasn't like start, stop, start, stop. And I felt good that I didn't leave off of emotion. I left off of the plan. Yeah. So I had a plan for like exiting my job and I executed the plan. Yeah. So I felt good about that. So yeah. I I felt secure because I worked out this process in my head, right? Because I was nervous at first. I'm like, well, what happens if I don't make enough money? And I knew I was leaving on good terms. So I was like, I, I, I know I have a skill set in serving and waiting tables that I know I'll be able to get a serving job anywhere. So my objective was, I, I, mean, I was making enough money outside of my job, but when I quit, I just went through this thing in my head. Why am I so nervous to quit? I'm nervous because if I fail, then it's not going to feel good. But my question to myself was, what would happen? What does failure look like? Failure mm-hmm. looks like I quit the job, then I have to come back to the job. Mm-hmm. So my biggest fear was that I have to go back to the job but I had a realization that I'm at the job right now. I'm actually living my biggest fear. Hmm. I'm already here. Was it because you had to go to the job? Was was that the fear? Or was it how the people would receive you for having to go back to that job? Absolutely. The people. Yeah. The people. But in my mind, it's just 
fear of failure and oh my gosh, worst case scenario, I have to come back to this job. Mm -hmm. And then I'd have to look crazy. And I, in my head, I hear, oh, you came back. But the little thing didn't work out. The little thing didn't work out. Because <laughs> I was talking spicy when I was leaving though. <laughs> My whole brand, Sleep is for Suckers, geared towards entrepreneurship, people that was willing to you know, go, at, go after a dream, dream. I'm inspiring people, motivating people. Yo, you need to go after your dream, man. You need to work, grind. We're going to be successful one day. And then you leave. And then you come back. Listen, if I was going to teach you how to make a million dollars, would you give me 10000 Like if I had a course teach you how to make a million dollars and you're po positive, you're going to make a million dollars, would you give me 10000 Of course you would. It's no-brainer, right? So in a calendar year, we make seven figures with the podcast. But there's 21 things that I extracted from that that you're going to need to launch a podcast. But I only got time to give you three right now. One is you need a distribution platform. The distribution platform is what you upload your podcast to. That platform sends it to Spotify, Apple, Google Play, so that your supporters can actually listen to your podcast. You're also going to need a microphone. You need a really good microphone so it's crispy audio. And three, you need an income strategy. This is not necessarily a hobby, unless you're going to make it a hobby. But I can teach you how I made the seven figures with these 21 things. Now, the good news is you don't have to give me 10,000. My ebook is only 37 bucks, okay? So listen, go to podcastebook.com and get the 21 things that you need. And I, I can explain it in detail, all the things that you need, okay? Podcastebook.com. Let's get to the episode. What happened to the inspiration? Yeah, yeah, what happened? You're not, you're not living by what you're talking about. <laughs> that, was my, that was my fear, but... I really had a conversation with myself. Like, the worst thing that can happen is I'll have to come back here. But yeah. since I'm here right now, let's just go. So I was really hopeful that I was going to be able to maintain. I had a really good job. Well, I had a really good paying job. Mm -hmm. Yo, what's going on? This joint is killing me. Is that it's, what's making the noise? Yes. Oh, okay. Did y'all hear that? <laughs> that joint was wild. Yeah. So I had, I had a, I thought, I was being hopeful that I would be able to maintain my, I still hear it, that I would still be able to maintain my job because it paid well and build a six figure at that time, a six figure business. Like I wanted to do both for as long as possible, but my job was stressing me out so much. Just the people and the environment, it was stressing me out so much that I would then get home and, you know, they say work your nine to five and then go home and work your six to 10. I get home and I'm just exhausted and depleted and I don't I don't want to deal with people, you know. And so I had to make an advanced decision to go ahead and part ways um, with that particular company. And I wasn't even fearful at that time. I wanted to make all the money. So I didn't need the paycheck necessarily for survival purposes. I just wanted to stack bread so fast because at that point, I had never made so much money. Yeah. Like, I'm getting money here. I'm getting money here. I'm getting money here. Like, your girl got streams. And I just wanted, I could. I can remember that I'm like, I just want, I just want $100,000 in the bank. If I can get $100,000 in the bank. And what's crazy is, even though I was making all that money and was making six figures, I still didn't have $100,000 oh, in the it's bank. Never like that. I didn't have, I was lucky to have $10,000 like in the bank, right? For several reasons, spending habits, lifestyle, all kinds of stuff. So leaving the job though, I didn't have an opportunity to necessarily create an exit strategy. But when I accepted the job, I knew there was an exit strategy, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Like I knew that it wasn't permanent. I wanted it to last as long as possible. I didn't necessarily know that in this month, this year, I'm going to leave. And by then, I'm going to have this, this, and this. What I did know is that nobody would ever be in a position to lay me off or fire me or separate with me. And, I'm, and I have nothing gotcha. coming in. So I was just building, building, building. And I wasn't even thinking about the quit date. I was just thinking about security. Gotcha. I think uh, one thing you said, too, is interesting. I think everybody, if you have a job, I think one of the, one of the goals that you can set is to have what you make. That's a really, really good goal. Mm -hmm. Like if you make forty thousand, maybe have forty thousand. What's mm -hmm. the plan to have forty thousand? Or if you make thirty thousand, have thirty thousand. Mm -hmm. Now, I that's that's still a goal for me right now. How can I have what I make? Right. Yeah. But I, I think that was a that that's a really good point. But I didn't set a date, and I know a lot of people say set a quit date. Now it's kind of put together an idea. But I, I said a quit number. So I said to myself that 
if I can make X amount of dollars consistently for four months, I'll quit. If I can make this amount of money on my side job for X amount of months, because I knew if I made it one month, it was luck. Or I had a good month, right? But I wanted to be able to sustain it. Let's say I can make X amount of dollars. Let's say the goal is you can live off $4,000 a month. How much y'all live off? Do y'all know? How much would you need to live and not go hungry and not go homeless? $3,500? $5,000? $2,500? I think we set that number because that's how I calculated it. I'm like, okay, what are my bills? How much would it cost for me to live and not go hungry and not go homeless and still have gas in my car? So I have, actually have a notebook where I wrote down, I don't know, was y'all on my live the other day where I was looking at my notebook? That's where that came from. I'm writing down everything that I'm spending. My rent, how much I'm about spending gas, but it takes some, it takes some paying attention to details. Like it has, you have to for a month track. Okay, I went to the gas station, filled up $50, $40 here. And you say, okay, this is about how much I spend in gas. Electric, phone, Leisure, right? I was a single man at the time. How much do I spend in bottles? That is your. uh, (laughs) (laughs) Were you you were you out here getting bottles? Duh! You ain't listen when you was dating. You ain't never go to somebody's house and they have a little. Would you like a drink? It's not. Let me. Oh, you mean bottles like that? Okay, like at for home. The house, not the club. Okay. No. I'm like, I can't, I, knew, I can't see you in the club, like sparklers coming through. Yeah, nah. <laughs> but a part you. of my strategy at that time, and this was like when I was learning how to cook, I had a couple dishes that I was nice with. Spaghetti is one. So funny. It's all the jokes That's everybody's. About. <laughs> That's every man's default dish. I wish I would, somebody I would, would, I would, make I would me certainly a hot dog. no hot dogs. <laughs> Like, I wish somebody would make me a hot dog. <laughs> but, tacos, though. You know what I mean? Tacos. Because it, the cooking of the meat is the same as the spaghetti, right? Um, but it's not, though. It is. No. It comes with a little and, pack, a packet. Oh, you were using the packages? Of course. Okay, that's fair. Uh, and then you just put the lettuce, cheese, all that kind of stuff. So spaghetti, tacos. I really started getting nice with the Alfredo. Now, okay, I got the jar of the Alfredo. It's pre-made, right? But you add certain things to it so it doesn't seem like that, especially like mushrooms. I tried spinach one time. That it, Forget it. My point is, my strategy in dating is that. For me to still have that lifestyle of, I still want to be able to invite somebody over, come through, kick it. I'm... I should I should have left that part out. All right, anyway. <laughs> anyway, I calculated everything I spent, but before I did that, and this is the homework of quitting a job, it took me a few months to find out what my living expenses are consistently. So I'm still building my business, but I'm not even really thinking about quitting, but I'm like, okay, what does it take for me to live? Then I set a number. And I said, well, I can hit this number consistently for X amount of months. I'll quit my job. Cause, but the challenge is, let's say you make making, I don't know, $4,000 a month on your job and you're making $4,000 a month in your business. Now you make $8,000. Mm-hmm. And now you're living off of $8,000. Mm-hmm. It took a lot of learning how to balance that. Like, I made all this money. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? So it's interesting that you're talking about doing the math, mm-hmm. basically. Um, I believe that we all have three prices that we need to figure out. The first price is your survival price. Mm-hmm. What do you need to just survive? And that's your basic essentials, not bare essentials, but basic essentials. What is your survival price? Your rent or mortgage, your kids, daycare, whatever that number is, minimally, I need this to survive. If you are an entrepreneur or aspiring entrepreneur right now that has a job, the first thing that you need to set a goal for is to reach that survival price. Like, Mm -hmm. set a survival price and then be able to pay yourself that, Mm -hmm. right? Set a survival price and be able to pay yourself that. Now, it can get a little deeper because you don't want to just be able to pay yourself that survival price one time and then you're quitting your job. I would say three, four, five months. My clients, 
um, when they used to come to me and want to quit their jobs, we had to we had to have 12 months. If they were parents with a spouse, especially a husband, I required 12 months in terms of my coaching. If they were not parents or didn't have a spouse, I required six months before I co-sign. You can do what you want, but before I co-sign you leaving your job, mm-hmm. that was that was the requirement. That's your survival price. Then what is your comfort price, right? So now you like to get your hair done. Maybe at that point of comfortability, you want to take a trip once or twice a year. What is the what is the comfort price? This isn't the life I dream of, but I'll take this life. What is that, right? I personally can never live beyond my comfort price. I have no desire to live at the level of my survival price. The third price is going to be your freedom price. What is your freedom price? At what point, at what amount of money can you make or pay yourself to where you are set up with enough financial resources to create a free and abundant life? Mm. That's good. You know what tripped me up too? Was, uh, and this is kind of like another level, uh, another layer, is finding out what you really make. Because mm. if I'm making four thousand dollars on my job, right, I go to work, they give me the money. Mm-hmm. How much does it cost for me to make that four thousand? Nothing. They just give me the money. <clears throat> There's no overhead for my job. Y- y'all get what I'm saying? Well, I'm making this four thousand dollars on my job, or, or like on my job, and then four thousand with my t-shirt brand. And I'm thinking I match my income. But the $4,000 after all expenses are paid is really $1,500 to me. So I'm saying I make $4,000 on my job. I make $4,000 in my business. Oh, I can quit my job and live the same lifestyle. It's not true. <laughs> it's not true. It's really, it's, it's really $1,500. So we really got to know how much we make from the business. That's why it was key when you said it. How much can I pay myself for my business and my mm-hmm. business still run? Yeah. So I actually quit wrong. I actually quit wrong. Like my quit number, I saved a certain amount of money, but the number that I was saying when I make consistently and I started making it consistently, when I opened my kiosk, because when I quit my job, I opened the kiosk in the mall, I had no money. And I quickly realized <laughs> the difference between gross and net. <laughs> quickly realized. First of all, it took me years to really figure out how much money I earned. Mm -hmm. And it took me an embarrassing number of years to realize that the money that my business made wasn't mine. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm I'm just figuring that out. Like, (laughs) in the last two, three years, like, just because the business makes this amount of money, that's not my money. Exactly. That's not not my personal money. And you don't want it to be. Yeah. Your personal money either. I remember 2014, So I I quit the end of 2012. So I'm making money, got a kiosk all 2013. And then 2014, we opened a store. And I do the numbers. I think it was my 2014 numbers. I think we did it in 2015. Or it was 2013 numbers, something like that. But I did my taxes. And I made a quarter of a million dollars. 250,000. But as we're going through the numbers, I realized that I made... 30,000 because a lot of the things that I was doing, I'm calling it expenses, whether it's taking people out to eat or, you know, I, I'm booking photo shoots and all that kind of stuff. I made less money making 250 as an entrepreneur than I did working at the Cheesecake Factory. Facts. You're better than me because in the beginning, I wouldn't even calculate the numbers mm. because I was scared to find out how much money I didn't have. Mm. And in finding out, like, it's cute to look at your Stripe and you see $70,000, $100,000, $250,000. But what I wasn't factoring in was how many at that time my business required me to travel a lot. How many flights was I paying for? How many uh, team lunches or company lunches was I sponsoring? How many people was I bonusing and give just how much shopping was I doing? I was so afraid to look at my numbers because I knew. I mean, sure, I'm paying everything off well, but is that that all I want to do? And and the answer is no. I knew that I had no money. I'm making good money, but I I possess 
no money. And then I also knew that looking at those numbers would force me to create new habits. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't prepared to create new habits. Like at that time, my mindset was saying, live your life, girl. And that's all you do. Like you work hard. You deserve this. You figured it out. You're making your own money. So what? Shop a little. So what? Eat out every day. So what? Do blah, blah. And I, and, and I was eating out then the way I eat out now. And the revenue is completely different. <laughs> <laughs> the Donnie eats out. You hear me? <laughs> Except when she goes to church and chicken. Whatever. I was eating just as good then as like, it was, it was like, you know, I was born with fine dining taste buds. <laughs> and I didn't have any filter. So it took me a long time to actually start looking at the numbers and the reality because I wanted to convince myself that I was doing so well and it was a smart decision to leave my job. And, you know, look at your numbers. Yeah. Look at your numbers. They'll save you. And one of the things that uh, that helped me that helped me leave is when I started to enjoy being at my job. It sounds weird, but I would go in. I think me and Donnie talked about it. I went in going to complain about my job and I knew I'd be there forever because I just keep complaining. But then I realized who I was and no matter where I'm at, whether I'm on a job, off the job, I work here, I work there, I am me. And I'm going to enjoy the life that I have. Like we have this one life and we do a lot of stuff in our lives, right? We're in certain relationships, we have certain jobs, we make good decisions, bad decisions. But I decided that I was going to live a good life. Yeah. Yeah. And I wasn't going to let the job stop me from living a good life. Mm. I wasn't going to let somebody else stop me from living a good life. So once, like just me mentally, I got locked in on the fact that I was going to live a good life. Even if I had to work this job for the next 10 years, I'm going to focus on being happy. And then I started building my business with that mindset, not I got to get out of this job. I got to get out of this job. I started living a life like, yo, this is fun. My job is taking care of me. Mm-hmm. I can have fun with this business. Would you agree that when, and I guess I guess it's, it's situational, but would you say that it's easier to make money now because you don't need it? Yeah. Why is that? Well, so when you're operating from a place of duress or your back is up against the wall, you're mentally so preoccupied with so many other things that it, mm. it just flat out perfects your performance. It flat out, not perfects, it affects. flat out affects your performance. And A-F-F. And you can spell it either way, but in this context, okay. It's so A-F-F. It, it flat out affects your Continue. performance. And then too, when you're building, especially in the type of business model that we're in, Right. When you are building from a place of duress and you're stressed out, the reason that you're doing it for gets lost. And it doesn't become about helping people and serving people. It come, it becomes about, I need to be able to pay my bills. Yeah. I need to get this money to pay my bills. And also, so, so many people focus on the law of attraction that you really got to focus on the law of vibration. The law of attraction is a, is a secondary law. The law of Vibration is the primary law. And so when you... Is that choking energy? She's tapped in. <laughs> She's tapped in. <laughs> when, you, when you start to understand the law of vibration, you understand that when I'm stressed out and I'm under duress and I got to get this money by tomorrow and I got to figure it out, your vibration is down here. Abundant vibration is up here. So when you already have money and things are happening for you and you don't have to worry about that, it raises your vibration to attract mm, different things to you. That's a fact. Mm-hmm. So listen, y'all, enjoy your job. I would say enjoy your life, right? Enjoy your life. Whatever's in it, just yeah. enjoy it, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's a lot less pressure, a lot less stress. And some of y'all really probably got to get off social media, like posts, but get off and don't. Because the number, I didn't know. I was looking at my, I was looking at one of my notebooks. And my goal was, I wrote it down. This was 2006, I want to say, 2008. My goal was, and I had it written down, to make an extra $1,000 a month in addition to my job. That's how I wrote it. 
to make an extra thousand dollars a month in addition to my job. But at that point, I wasn't. On, I think I got on Instagram 2010, right? I, I don't think I wasn't heavy on social media like that. And back then, on social media, it wasn't all these income testimonials. It right. wasn't all the. It wasn't all the how to make six figures, how to make seven figures. It wasn't none of that on social media. Mm -hmm. It wasn't screenshots of Stripes and screenshots of Shopify. It wasn't. It was just fun. And you get to see people and share stuff that's funny and motivation, inspiration, stuff like that. But it wasn't all the stuff that you you can start to like model yourself after somebody and chase something that yeah. somebody else has. Or let me not post this because if I do, I look broke. Oh, no. Nah, <laughs> and then I lose business. That. And, you know, what I start this off with, play. Like, yeah. we've lost our sense of just sincere yeah. enjoyment. Yo, yeah. Now on social media, it's a business. Like, mm -hmm. getting on social media overwhelms me more than it doesn't. Yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> My thing is, y'all need to, sit, outside of all the stuff you hear, some extra money every single month, what will make you happy? If it was like consistent, mm -hmm. nonstop. I'm not talking about the seven figures, not talking about the six figures. In addition to your job, so who has a job here? Who has a job here? Mm -hmm. How much would like, if you had an extra stream, it would dramatically Who improve. needs to have a job here? <laughs> who needs to have a job? <laughs> who needs a job right now? <laughs> it would dramatically improve your lifestyle. You'd be happy about yourself. What's the number? Extra three grand. Extra in addition to your job. In addition yeah. to your, imagine an extra three thousand in addition to your job. Lit. But because we can't, we don't look at it like that. We look at, oh, we gotta make 10K a month or 8K a month or 20,000 a month. Even if we make the 3,000, we'll start to feel our vibration. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, we'll start mm -hmm. operating from a low vibration. We won't even be able to maintain the 3,000 because we're not grateful for it. Yeah. Because we got to go higher. Yeah. And then you might start making 3000 because it's not the 10. You switch it up because I got to do something else to get to the 10 when really you're doing the right thing. We just don't appreciate the three grand. We, we don't, don't appreciate it. My goal was an extra thousand a month. I think the study was an extra $600 a month. 500 $500 mm -hmm. a month would keep most families out of bankruptcy. Yep. Most people are just $500 away from what's considered poor. Mm-hmm. And that extra not having a 500 is causing tension in your family, which is adding to the, con is divorce, contributing to the divorce numbers. Bad parenting, all kinds of stuff. What, 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 what's interesting about having a job and then having this goal from your business is that it's never really the truth. I want to invite you to pick my brain. Mine too. Mine too. Yours too? Mine too. Yours too. Okay, you guys. Brain. We are so excited because we just dropped our newest podcast series called The Brain Picker Podcast. David. Oh, it's going down. You get to pick our brain. You have a business idea, a concept. You're stuck. You can't get off the ground. You need the advice of seasoned, experienced entrepreneurs. Not only entrepreneurs that are practitioners, but we got a lot of people that we've been coaching all over the last decade. All over the globe. They got receipts. Not just that, you never know where your next investor might be hanging out. And the word on the street is, we got all the connections. That's a big fact. We got all the connections. So if you want to sit down with us and pick our brains. In front of our audience. And we're letting you pick our brains. We won't even talk bad about you for doing it in front of our audience, bringing your business maximum exposure. Find the link somewhere around here, wherever you see it. It's there. And apply right now to pick our brain. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get it. Let's get it. <laughs> <laughs> Most people, there are some people who actually love what they do, yeah. right? I even believe that there are a number of those people that if they could figure out how to do it for themselves, they love it even more. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, most people don't enjoy their job. So for most people to say, well, if I can make an extra $3,000 a month, when you start making that $3,000 a month, you start side-eyeing your job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> huh. Imagine. Yo, imagine loving a job and then social media tells you that you shouldn't love your job mm -hmm. and the thing that made you happy makes you depressed or mad now. Yeah. Even though the thing that makes you happy genuinely makes you happy. Yeah. I talk to guys, you know, I love my job, but I got to start something. I'm like, why? Because, you know, you got to be an entrepreneur. You can't let a job, you can't let a job feed you because the job, 
I'm like, but you like it, right? He's like, yeah, but I, I got to... What's wrong? Listen, entrepreneurship is not for everybody. Diversification of yeah. how you make money is for everybody. For sure. Right? And you don't have to do that. Don't let me, Dave, or anybody else pressure you into becoming an entrepreneur because if you don't truly have a love for this, it's really stressful. And I truly have a love for it and it still can be truly stressful sometimes, for right? Sure. It can still be truly stressful sometimes. So sometimes you have to say, um, maybe I'm not supposed to be an entrepreneur. Maybe I'm just supposed to invest in Amazon on the stock split. Maybe I should purchase some real estate, right? Maybe I should do something else that generates additional revenue, but it doesn't have to come in the form of entrepreneurship. One important thing to understand is that all of us were uniquely created and have our own individual purpose, right? We were all uniquely made and have our own individual purpose. The meaning of life, um, and this was put to me in a way that just made so much sense. The meaning of life is to find your gift, right? The meaning of life is to find your gift. Mm -hmm. And the purpose is when you give it away. Hmm. You are here to find your gift. What is your special gift, right? And that could come in the form of passion. But when you start to give it away, especially in a way that serves other people, that's when you found your purpose. So I could never understand when my mom would tell me, your gift is communication. She's been telling me that since I was three years old. Your gift is communication. Your gift is communication. Your gift is communication. And it was, it was really just recently that I, I got it. I understand that my gift is communication, but I never wanted to tie that into my purpose because it feels so little. It feels so minute, right? My purpose has to be bigger than communication. Well, my purpose isn't necessarily communication. My purpose is what my communication allows me to do. How my communication allows me to serve other people is my purpose. I help other people dream bigger. I help other people understand that they can live abundant lifestyles. I help other people learn how to serve other people. And that is my purpose. That is what I'm purposed to do. And it was such a freeing feeling when I realized that my gift, my gift has been in me and I've been operating in purpose my whole life. I have been like, well, when did I discover like affirmations and how important it was? I can remember as far back as elementary school. Like I remember when the teacher, there was, there was a project we had to do. I was in fourth grade and we had to draw what we thought about, Right. Everybody else is drawing about, you know, playtime and recess and animals and cars. I drew my life. My mom still has it. I drew the type of house that I wanted. I drew the kind of car that I wanted. I drew that I was a husband. I drew that, I mean, I had a husband. I drew, I drew that I was a mom. Like I drew these things out. And my mom went to the school. We had to present these drawings. And my mom went to the school and she's going, they're, they're hung up on the wall in the hallway. And she's going down the line and she's like, wow, what kid drew this? And my teacher said, your kid drew this. And when she tells the story, I don't remember this part. She says she was just filled with tears because of how mature my drawing was. But it wasn't even that it was mature. It was that I was already tapped in to what I'm supposed to be doing. And it just took time and years and refinement and development for me to operate in a space where I felt comfortable sharing it. Mm. Okay. I got something for you. Ready for our notes? I know you haven't taken notes. You got a question? Uh, I actually toss it. Sure. Uh, Let's do it. Uh, wait. There we go. <laughs> it's okay. Why is he doing that? Um... I, and what I what I kind of extract from this conversation is I think we need to really focus on where we are right now. Where 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 are you? I mean, in terms of finances, um, happiness, where are we? 
before we go anywhere, obviously we got to figure out where we're at right yeah. now. Okay. Um, I think the next thing is, you know, identifying where you want to go. So setting the goal, obviously we want to know where we want to go, but th there's, I think goal setting is challenging sometimes because the goal is to be multimillionaire. I want to make seven figures, right? But in the main goal should be smaller benchmark goals. My wife was really, really on, especially when we had uh, when we had Sarai when she was pregnant. She was really big on these what she they call milestones, right? So like they're milestones. First, she's looking at the track of all right, our baby's the size of a blueberry. Now our baby's the size of a tangerine. Now a pear. Now the baby's the size of like it was just like she was just looking at what the baby should be doing step by step. Now. The goal is to have a healthy baby, but she's monitoring the whole process. And then when she's born, she's really focused on these milestones. Okay, the baby should be holding her neck up. The baby should be laughing at this month. The baby should be grabbing stuff and she'll put everything in her mouth or she'll touch stuff. And my wife is like, oh, that's her sensory, whatever. She's like trying to feel her way. She's interested in textures and stuff like that. Oh, by this point... She should be eating, I don't know, she should be getting all formula, whatever. She's still on the milestone. So the goal is to have a healthy baby, but there was always another stage that she was supposed to get to, right? The milestone. So I think it's important to know where you're at, but also know where you're going. Yeah. But you need to know what the next step is. We want to get to the top of the mountain, but what is the next, the very next step, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then lastly, I think we need to define who we need to be to get there. Mm. And for me, it was really, really clear that I was not going to be successful being the person that complains about everything. And I caught myself Ooh. complaining about everything. Ooh. Can't complain about the schedule, complaining about the manager that's working, complaining about the, the, the cooks are not getting my food, complaining about the tips, complaining about the front desk. I I remember going to the front desk host as, and I thought they were intentionally sitting me people that weren't going to tip me. <laughs> Y'all had beef. You thought so. No. Yeah. <laughs> and that was me. Just ignorant. You sent me with all these black people. You can't say it. <laughs> you can't say it out loud. You can't go there. Why you sent me all these black people? All these women. But I was like, yo, you sit. What? Okay. I don't, I don't get no people get that no look like they got money. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> But then I realized that my thought process affected my tips. So I would go to a table that I think wouldn't tip me, and they wouldn't. Because you would serve them with the vibration of they ain't going to tip me anyway. I had a low vibration. I you were so low vibration. I just, yeah. I just, I had to become something else. And you I know, the, 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 the thing is, you still have to become something else. 100%. You never stop becoming. 100%. I am on a very intentional journey to become because I know that the next level for me, I am not who I need to be just yet to deserve, recognize, or appreciate that next level, right? And it's really important for you to respect and appreciate who you are right now because some people would hear me say that and say, but Donnie, you have all these things and you've got all these accomplishments and you're so happy and blah, 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 blah. Well, trust that I'm aware of that. I am grateful for the woman that I am today because the woman that I am today is a version of who I prayed for some time before. I prayed to be this woman. I pray for this freedom. I pray for this financial success. I pray to be this type of person to other people. I pray to serve in this way. But now the prayers that I am praying are going to require me to feel uncomfortable right now. And I feel uncomfortable right now. I just know, like, it's like I'm ready to burst at the seams because I can feel the vibration. Like, you better raise, you better rise, you better increase your energy, you better increase that vibration because where you need to go is going to require that level of you. That's, a That's fact. what I'm working on. I, yo, it was like the little stuff at my job that allowed me to, and I'm not coming at you, but like, I would be late. All the time. You know, me prefacing that, prefacing it that way means I'm coming at you. That's I haven't crazy. even been late. I know. Yeah. Uh, well, it's kind of close to that. But it, the, the job... It's nice. 
understand. Yeah. My 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 goal is to just get to the place earlier. And mm -hmm. literally, I still have that same habit mm -hmm. of like there's like an internal clock where I just hate being late. I'm talking about like a minute or two late. So we are on a call. So our call starts at 9.05 on Tuesdays. And I might have texted Joe at 9.06. Like, where you at? Because I just, we late. Like, why don't we, like, let's just, like, I'm just coming at everybody today. Like, I mean, there, there, there's, there's just like something that I had to work on. Just being prompt, right? Not cutting corners. So what you had to do is like, you had to, um, like you have to like lift up the booths or whatever and wipe out the booths and you have to like clean. It's called side work. Yeah. And I would do just enough. I'll do just <laughs> enough to get my signature because the shift leader has to sign off that you did your stuff. And I do just enough. The parts that they could see. The parts that they could see. <laughs> and I just, I knew how to clean to where I ain't got to really, really do it. But I remember saying, yo, I'm going to do my best job with cleaning these booths and doing my side work and cleaning the catch-ups and all that kind of stuff. Not so I can get a signature, but so that I can become the type of person who finishes my job. Mm. I want to be complete. Yeah. We finish it. Ain't nobody around. It's like integrity stuff. Like, yeah. I want to be, be done. And then I got to be a shift leader and I started driving it. And they didn't like it because I'm... Like, I don't, I don't want you to be the person that's going to half do it because I remember I know all the ways to half do it. And now I want to be a leader. How can I get them to do it effectively mm -hmm. and still have them appreciate it? So now I'm, I'm working on my communication and my leadership skill all while I was working at the Cheesecake Factory. So your job right now is giving you an opportunity to become something. Absolutely. What's up? Hey, oh, wait, should I move this one? Yeah, yeah. please. I'm Jada, uh, J-A-E-L-L, -L, official on Instagram. Uh, I wanted to add on to what y'all said about, like, purpose and happiness. Uh, so I went to the Vincent Van Gogh Museum uh, back in December, and it had me thinking so much about purpose because um, he literally made no money, like, while he was alive. Mm -hmm. He made paintings for, like, I think 10 years straight, and it was hundreds and hundreds of paintings. Um, he was even using his paintings to, like, pay for his rent. I think he only sold one painting while he was alive. But mm. like once he died, uh, some person like found his artwork and now like one piece is worth like $90 million. Like wow. his like, but most of his pieces now are like worth like $80 million, $70 million, all of this I'd stuff. And he never... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. 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 It gave me a lot to think about because it made me realize um, that purpose isn't always tied to money. Uh, sometimes it made me realize like your purpose may not be meant to affect the current generation. It may be meant to like affect the people after you, like the generations after you. And so like just living in like the world we live in now, you feel most people feel like, oh, well, I'm not making money off of what I do. This isn't my purpose. But I feel like that's not how you should look for purpose. Like, his purpose wasn't any less purposeful because he didn't make money. Like, he didn't get to the fruits of that labor. It was still his purpose. Like, and so what I wanted to say about that is, like, our purpose, for one, is meant to impact people. Like, his purpose, like, clearly all the paintings he created and everything he did, it impacted, like, the whole world. He's like one of the most famous artists. Also, like how you were saying, like your your skills like show up as a child. His purpose, I'm pretty sure like those artistic abilities and things like that, it popped up as a kid. So it's like it, it had always been present. And also like your your purpose is going to be what you love. Like he like went through like a lot of depression and different things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, he he cut off his ear, everything. But even through like his artwork, he still made sure it was so full of like life and beauty. And and it was still something he enjoyed and loved so much. So I feel like that's what you should be looking for when you're trying to figure out, oh, well, what is my purpose in life? I don't think you should be looking for like, oh, well, this is my purpose because it makes so much money or that's certain good. things like that. Like, those are some of the things I feel like you should look at when you're trying to figure out, well, what is my purpose? You know what the saddest part is? If you live a life like that where it seems like a sad story, though, to me, because if you live a life where you're frustrated and it's, 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 it's just... I'm not focused on happiness. I'm focused on, I don't know, recognition or whatever. And then you die. And then all that work that you did, 
it blows up and now you're famous, but you don't get to enjoy it. Mm-hmm. I think that's a sad, sad story. But if he spent his whole life making art because it makes him happy mm-hmm. and he's living a life of happiness and saying one day, I think Martin Luther King, perfect example, he would just say one day, all this stuff that I'm going through, one day, the same for me, one day, things are going to be better for my people. Mm-hmm. And he can, he can, like, after it's all over, look back and say, well, I didn't, I didn't get to enjoy the fruits of my labor, but I enjoyed the revolution. Yeah. I enjoyed inspiring people. I enjoyed it. I think that's a happier story. But if you're, like, spending this whole life trying to get something that may never come, that's a sad story. It is sad. They they both, um, Van Gogh, Martin Luther King, great two great examples, spent their lives enjoying doing the work. Did Van Gogh enjoy it? Cut off his ear. Well, he cut off his ear. Well, I would imagine. Is that true? I imagine yeah. that he enjoyed <laughs> painting, but it didn't necessarily make him happy in his lifestyle. You know, necessarily. I don't know the reason that he cut off his mm-hmm. ear, but there are some people who are destined, who are called for something. Purpose is about something beyond yourself. And unfortunately, it just happens. Sometimes it just is that you don't get to see how it plays out, but you played a major part in it. Yeah, 100%. One, I'm, I'm, it. It has always bothered me that Dr. King didn't get to see the results of his work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you know what the crazy thing is? He didn't even try to. He didn't even try he to. Knew. He, he knew. knew. He knew that the work that he did would change the world. And it did. And he was more purposeful about creating and sharing a message to the people. Like it wasn't about the result. It was about the mission. It was about the work Mm -hmm. for him. Wasn't about the result. It was about have the dream, Mm -hmm. believe, right? Those things were it for him and his children were able to carry on. His wife certainly was able to carry on a lot of his legacy. And then we, the people, we as people, the whole nation that he impacted has carried on his dream. I wonder what it was like to live back in those days, man. Like you see the people getting on the, on the paddy wagon, going to jail with smiles on their face. Like, yo, I'm a part of the revolution. I'm a part. Go to school the next day, like, yeah, I was locked up. You know what I mean? Fighting a good fight. You feel me? Doing what I do. You a part of the revolution today? If if it comes down to it, you on the back of the paddy wagon? <laughs> it's different now. It's different now. It's different. I mean... The revolution now is on social media. <laughs> yeah, but who's who's fighting? I think it's different now. The It's all about, like, money and elevation of themselves. I don't care. Yo, people that are like revolutionaries and stuff like that, for the most part, it'd be a play. Mm. That's the truth. Yes, it'd be a play. So it's different now. I don't, I don't know. Like everybody has Well, at least the people that we know have access to. I believe there are still some really pure people out there who Mm -hmm. are for the culture, for the people. Uh, But, you know, Social media, again, has allowed us to get so up close and personal with everybody's yeah. lives that people are just getting exposed left and right. Yeah, it's a bunch of clout chasing. Oh, yourself. Mm. See it. You seen his oh. spirit and his imagination. So he did live and see it. What's this about? So, what, do you, what do you mean? Pull the, pull the mic a little closer. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, go ahead. I think that Martin Luther King did see it because he seen it in his mind first. Mm. So he was living and he did see it. And that's why he was able to manifest it. Yeah. I know you don't like the word manifest. I like the word manifest. <laughs> I like the word for, you know, word's sake. Yeah. But yeah, but it, in the, in terms of him seeing the fruits of his labor, but there, there were a bunch of wins though. Yeah. He did have a bunch of wins. Like these little wins. Like, like I'm saying, he had this dream. One day... Black boys and white boys be able to play together. It won't be about the uh, the color of your skin, but the content of your character, right? That was the dream. But you did have these little wins, right? Yo, we go this bus boycott. There's a win here. Remember, they they went to the bridge, took an L. At first, he lo- drove all these people to a bridge, and it was violence. But 
he saw these little wins, but there was, I, I believe with Martin, there was always a focus. What is the next win? I, ha- I have the big dream in mind. I have the million dollars in mind. I have the quarter million dollars in mind. But how do I get to this thousand dollars a month? You know what I mean? So yeah. I think it, in terms of like transitioning, you have to, you're just, you're doing everything you can right now being who you are right now. Yeah, yeah. This is I got right. that from Myron. He said, every, every, if you are making 30,000, that is the most you'll be able to make being who you are right now. Yeah. Mm. You're doing everything you can. And if you're struggling to grow, um, as, as we wrap up, if, if we're, if you're struggling to grow. Don't try to wrap me up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're struggling to grow, consider mentorship. Mm-hmm. Seriously. Consider coaching. For the Brain Picker Podcast. You know what I mean? Consider. Is that a, was that a plug or you was... That was... No. I'm, you didn't lead in? So consider mentorship seriously. So one of the people that I'm so sad that I never had the opportunity to meet uh, that's been a strong mentor to me from afar is Bob Proctor. Mm, I you feel know, that way about Jim Rohn. Yeah. And Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn. Mm. But, but Bob Proctor, I guess, has been in my ear a lot lately. And um, I remember hearing him talk about discovering his own purpose, right? And he looked up to one of my favorite authors. Well, he wrote one of my favorite books, uh, The Strangest Secret, Earl Nightingale, okay? Earl Nightingale. And first of all, it's wild that Bob Proctor and Earl Nightingale lived at the same time. But anyway, they did. And so he read this book, felt like it changed his life. He went to Earl Nightingale's office, like he called for weeks, I believe, maybe even months, to try to get a meeting with Earl Nightingale. Now, he didn't tell Earl Nightingale's assistant or secretary that he lived in a completely different state. He gets the meeting for 15 minutes. He goes to Earl Nightingale's office. All he knew was that he wanted to be Earl Nightingale. Like this man from afar was the answer for him. Who's the answer for you? Who do you want to be? He wanted, and he said this, all I know is that I wanted to be Earl Nightingale right? I loved everything he stood for, the way he communicated, the way he moved the room, his books, everything. He goes in, he gets this 15-minute meeting. He ultimately ends up becoming Earl Nightingale's VP of sales. He's working now for Earl Nightingale as the VP of sales, but he's still tracking him. He's still studying him. He still wants to be him. Bob Proctor died being one of the world's most profound personal development and belief coaches to ever exist. But he didn't discover it and stumble upon it without any assistance. He set a target. Someone became his target. And he said, that guy, I want to be him. He became him. Arguably, possibly even more impactful than him, equally impactful. Maybe you are... The way that we live today... We've lost humility in saying, I want to be him. I want to be her. That's, that's who, that's it for me. Your purpose might be suffocated by your lack of humility. Mm-hmm. You might not see it because you're afraid to speak that there's another human who's doing what you want to do. And you're not humble enough to say, I want to do it. How can I serve? How can I serve? How can I serve? That's exactly what Bob Proctor did. Mr. Nightingale, sir, how can I serve? And through that work, he was able to develop and live on purpose until the day he, that man worked until the day that he died. He was still booked. He's still booked. (laughs) 87 years old, I believe, until the day that he died, he was still living on purpose. Who is that picture person for you? Who can you think of that might awaken what it is? Is it this, you know, fashion blogger who changes, uh, you know, the way people feel through fashion and you're really into this person and you're like, I would give anything to be able to do that. Is it someone who communicates very well and they're able to move and inspire and motivate a room and you want to be that? Is it somebody who is just really, really great at Uh, raising amazing children who are going to be somebody. Maybe it is that you want to be that. Your purpose doesn't have to be attached to something that is a super financial gain, right? Now, your gifts will make room for you. Mm. I believe that wholeheartedly. 
Your gifts will make room for you, which is why Martin Luther King was able to live the life that he was able to live at a time where black people were not winning. We were oppressed. Your gift will make room for you. You have to sacrifice sometimes to make room for your gift. You have to sacrifice most times to make room for your gift. But who are you tracking? Who is your target? Figure out how to serve that person. Start at the bottom, serve them for free. Work your way up, prove and add value. Work your way up, get a position with that person. Learn from that person, study that person. And then you may uncover your own purpose for your own life. That's good, Donnie. Let's clap that no, I just, Let's just... Donnie, I just want to shout you out for just tapping in. And um, just... When she started talking about vibrations, she was like, okay, that's my <laughs> girl, I like that. She's tapping all the way in. From the first podcast when I came on to now, you see... Because she used to operate well, on very low vibrations, right? I don't she think too understand. low. I don't think so <laughs> The thing is, I've been tapped in in this way. Yeah. Now, you go on some other tangents that I'm not... You know, I'm, I'm, I'm open to, but yeah. I'm not all the way tapped in yet. I tried the tree. Yeah. It didn't yeah. really do for me what you said she it was going to do for trees, me. Though. Did you hug the tree? You didn't did. do it though. Yeah. I have hugged the tree. I got to do it. I have to have another the experience. The naked hug with the... Uh, I didn't do the naked hug. I didn't do the naked hug, but um, that's the reason. I did a hug. Maybe. You didn't do it right. <laughs> because I saw ants. I saw ants on the tree. You I wasn't going to hug the tree. So that's a part way. of, like, that's a part of the vibe. Like, yeah, nature, you go in already insects. thinking like, oh, this tree is going to give me peace. Then, Logically, it yeah. won't work. You got to just go spiritually. Yeah, but, I mean, I, I've done that. And to your point, yeah. um, where King Energy is... Did you have your shoes off? Yes. To your point, where King Energy is saying he's noticed a difference. I'm tapped in differently, right? I've shown up differently in this episode. Um, I am very intentional about the work that I'm doing right now. Yeah. And people can change and people can grow and people can develop. Like I am living proof of it because my mindset today is not my mindset 10 years ago. My mindset today probably isn't even my mindset three months ago because I'm constantly learning. Like I'm not, I'm not constantly seeking information. I'm constantly absorbing and learning, right? You can read, read, read. No, I'm not constantly seeking information because people can seek information and do nothing with it. It's just like networking. I don't network. I connect, right? There's a difference. I can talk to you. This is networking. Mm -hmm. But if I leave and this relationship manifests into nothing that we talked about in this room, we network. We didn't connect. So I don't necessarily seek information. I absorb it. And because I've been so intentional, I believe I'm on day 19 of my 90-day journey. Part of that is me reading a new book every two weeks. Every two weeks, I read a new book. I'm really like, there's no music. During the morning meetup. Really <laughs> Let's talk about together. it. There's there's no music playing for me right now. It's just anytime I'm in my vehicle, it's all personal development. And the Donnie who I am on this date is absorbing it differently. You ever realize, like, you ever read a book or watched a movie or watched a documentary and there's a part of it that you're like, oh man, I didn't remember this part happening. You saw it. We all saw it happen, but you don't remember it happening because there was something in your life happening at that time that caused you to be distracted at that moment or something that would not allow you to receive it in that moment. And I am receiving the same information that I've been absorbing, but differently now. Mm. So for you wondering, can I change? Will I change? Is it possible? Absolutely. Like, stop believing that people can't change. People can change. You can change. You changing changes your, changes your situation, which changes your life. You just have to seriously study the law of vibration and get tapped into that and learn how to force your energy. Because when I started this journey, I was kind of in a low place and I had to force the vibrational shift. And there's ways we can't get into right now. I've yeah. covered it on the podcast before. I had to force the energy shift. And once you force the energy shift, eventually your body normally starts tuning into that. And then you start to become, and now you're ready to receive and absorb things on a higher level. Anyway, we could keep going, but I can't. Right. What, did, what did you absorb <laughs> from the club, Brother Mike? <laughs> that I still, your girl, your girl still got it. You hear me? <laughs> 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 that was all. No, so it wasn't, um, again, it, it felt like, so it felt like a club to me. Like if I had to go out and have, I just wanted to have some fun and I'm not about to be like in compound, turning it down, turning it up, standing on sofas. So I had to go like 
to the restaurant that played yeah. music that, that I like, could, you know, I could be in my seat that, you know, OK, all right. And, you know, it helps to know that I can still show up in social environments. Good. Yeah. OK. Yeah. I just want to share this. Then I'm going to walk off um, for everyone. The information that you see is already within you. Yeah. So when you become still and listen to God within you, everything that you're asking everybody else is already within you. OK, so I just want to share that bar. Thanks, King Energy. All right. Let's give King Energy a round of applause, man. All right. All right. This episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup. Is everybody here in The Morning Meetup app? You have the app? Wow, what's up, man? Why? Gotcha. Did you click the personal link in the email? You said you got an email that said you got a personal link. Right. Yeah, that's just to join the call. I got you. I'm gonna work. I'm gonna work on that for you. I got you. Did you Anybody else got the app? I'm about to check your phone. Whoa, wait, whoa, wait, 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 wait. fans. Did you email support? Do me a favor. I'm about to do this presentation for the more just email support. Hey, <laughs> this is my name. This is my email address or whatever. I need to figure out what I gotta do to get in the app. Okay. She had a call. He didn't. He wasn't at the call. Probably. I'd imagine. Sometimes, guys, the resources that you're looking for are just a question away. Yes. TheMorningMeetup.com. Download the app. We got a bunch of stuff in there. I asked a very interesting question. Did y'all see my question? It was last night in the chat. So the chat's where it goes down. Y'all see the question in the chat? Go to the... Nobody saw it? Y'all didn't see the question in the chat? Is the chat, chat really chat? where it's going check down? Huh? Yeah, well, it was about help. It was something I was trying to figure out that has everything to do with y'all. But um, did you? That's what's up. One oh, um, yeah. So um, the chat is where it will start going down. The chat is litty. Okay, so download the app. Be a part of it, man. Listen, I will talk to you every single weekday of the year for four hundred dollars. So seventy nine dollars a month, but you can be a part of this app for the year. For $3.99. And like we're continuing to drop content in there. Pretty much we're trying to drop at least something every single week in the app that only app members have access to. And I have a course, uh, my podcast blueprint course, it's about to be in the app for 75% off. Mm. I want to, listen, my goal is making sure, I, listen, you know what I want to do? I want to do like a big event like Black Equity Con, but not have to sell tickets to nobody else. Just do it for our community. I just want to like, just our community. Vision. You feel me? And I, I, you know, do another course or drop a, a course or something like that. And y'all are the first to check it out and all that kind of stuff. Give it to y'all free to sell everybody else. So Get the app, The Morning Meetup. Go to themorningmeetup.com or go to your app store. Download The Morning Meetup. It's $79 a month. Every single day we are on a call. You're going to learn. You're going to grow. You're going to connect with other people. And the recordings since like 2018 are all in the app. And the recording from the day typically gets dropped in the same day. So you can go back and listen to it. It's the most amazing community in the world, okay? And um, we got a conference coming up. If you're listening to this, uh, when the conference is coming up, June 9th and 10th. Um, Black Equity Con. Black Equity Con. Y'all coming, right? Everybody coming? Black Equity Con. Um, I set up just for podcasters uh, t- social 20 social proof? Social proof 20? 20% off for a social proof something. It's going to be in the description. We'll have it in the... Yeah, we'll have it in the description. Okay, actually, maybe a social proof. Just social proof should be 20% off. Just social proof, however you spell it, okay? So, themortemeetup.com. I'll see you in Miami. Donnie Wiggins. Ready? Finished? All right. So, this episode is also brought to you by Six Figure EDU. You guys, I have an amazing program where I train and develop coaches and consultants from scratch. So, maybe you're someone today, you got inspired by this episode, you were ready to teach somebody something, go out there, live on purpose. Let me help you develop yourself into a, co- a coach, consultant, or co- course creator. Go to sixfigureedu.com. That's S-I-X, figureedu.com. And this episode is also brought to you by Post to Paid. Post to Paid is a service where I text you guys three text messages every single day. This is for service-based entrepreneurs 
who want to connect with their social media audience, increase your engagement and convert your followers into buyers. I give you exactly what to post, exactly what to post. And you know what I just realized? We never took the dollar trial off. There was a seven day dollar trial that I was supposed to end two months ago. Mm. And I don't trials no more. Yeah, I'm out of this trial stuff. So you might get lucky when you see this episode because I got to figure out how to get rid of the trial with this new system that I'm Mm -hmm. in. But if not, it's just $37 a month. Just $37 a month and you have all of your post prompts every single day. Seven days a week except for holidays. Last thing. I love it. Um, All right. Uh -uh. What? Would you wear this outfit? (laughs) With the leather and then the it's cute. Cotton Polly. It's, it's extremely cute. Yeah. I don't, I don't do. I don't I don't do it's cute. I mean, it's cool. It's just like the different shades and materials. I don't know. I'd have probably go with maybe a, it's called a what? Undertone? Different material blends? First of all, it's just fly. Okay. The colors, I get it with the mono. I'm just, I'm, I don't know about fashion. You fashionable. It look weird to me. What was the next thing we were promoting? Brain Picker Podcast. <laughs> Brain Picker Podcast. <laughs> My outfit's cool. Your outfit is no basic. You, you know what's crazy? At best. Sarai you got, got me. Your Sarai got me right here. And your I was actually looking situation for hanging out of your pants. You got baby throw up on your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> See, I didn't realize until I got here. You should here. be concerned about what people think today. That looks crazy. Anyway, this episode is also brought to you by the Brain Picker Podcast, guys. David and I say some pretty good stuff sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty dope advice and feedback on business building. You get to pick our brains, like a focused, concentrated hour on just your business Mm -hmm. on the Brain Picker Podcast, not only just talking to me and David and receiving coaching from us in real time, but also having our audience and our network engaging with you and ready to purchase from you as well. So We are so good at it. We're so so good. good Man, we give people like, mind-blowing breakthroughs. Man, imagine having us as your CEO for the day. Mm. Or, I mean, like, we we get to implement some stuff for your business for the day. You got to go, right? It's just crazy. Go to brainpickerpodcast.com, brainpickerpodcast.com, brainpickerpodcast.com. All right, we done? We are done. I'm out of here. It's We're content day for me, so I got to scram. You and I both. All right, we out of here. Peace. Bye.